Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play The Red Strings Club. Uh, now that a car has diverted Irving into this bar, we can get to one of my favorite scenes. So dungeon number zero point out that Deconstruct Team's previous game, Gods Will Be Watching, also had an Irving. Irving McAllister, who was the antagonist who tortures you throughout that game. I wouldn't have caught on to that reference uh, because I didn't make it very far into Gods Will Be Watching. But that certainly makes sense now, doesn't it? Irving III, who's a specialist in getting information out of people via torture. And he seems to think that's. Oh, God, don't get mad, sugar. Oh, I hate him. I hate this shit child. He's so good, though. He's such a good shit kid. And they're gonna test their methods against each other. What should we aim for? Something quick. How about we guess each other's ages? Donovan's gonna try to pull Irving's age out of him through bartending. <laughs> and, uh, Irving is gonna try to get Donovan's age via some form of torture. And this is the best, this is the best! We could appeal to his rebellion, or we could just keep the soul disc where it is and serve this shitty child a glass of ice. Very zen. No, I just don't want to give him anything. Never expected such a deep cocktail. You trying to get me to reflect on the emptiness of a torturer's soul? Let's start with, uh, this is a, this is a good little ploy. Is it even legal for you to drink here? Because the drinking age here is 21. After serving me a glass empty of alcohol but full of meaning? You dare ask me such a question? Yes, it is appropriate for me to be drinking philosophy. God, <laughs> he's such a bastard! How long have you been torturing people? I'd say since my grandfather got into the business and until some McAllister dies without descendants. But in the sense of myself physically harming someone, less than 20 moons. You had to put that in moons? The moon's been always, always been my witness to my work. Oh, God. If you want clear answers, serve punches instead of drinks. This is the last shot. How does somebody end up being a torturer? And I don't like that question, because it implies that being a torturer is bad. But you know, torture's an art. I descend from a proud legacy of professional torturers. Torture is not plain violence. Sometimes it's not violent at all. Animals don't practice torture. Torture was a craft invented by man. A craft honed to perfection by countless guys like you and me. Torture is an intimate matter between two people. There's always a profound bond between the torturer and their victim. So your dad's a torturer too? Oh no, he's a complete wuss. That was a bit sexist on your part. Why wouldn't my mom be the torturer? But who I really look up to is my grandfather. He's a natural. Wish we could have spent more time together. He never takes you to the park to play catch? <laughs> Alright, I'm getting bored of your bartending game already. I don't see you getting any closer to the prize, so, what's your guess? You kind of danced around the age question. Let's go somewhere in the middle of these. 19. That was pure luck. Yeah, we got it right. Uh, and I knew the answer ahead of time, because <laughs> I've already done this once before. That's not the interesting part, though. You're pretty cool for a guy your age, so I'm going to pay my respects to you by performing my best number. Russian Roulette. This revolver is loaded with just a single bullet out of six chambers. I'm going to ask you one question. If you don't answer me, I'm going to pull the trigger. Then, if your brains haven't been scattered all over the bar, I win. No, I'll ask you again. Pull that trigger already. We avoided one out of six. 
This isn't the first gun I've had in my face, kid. Whatever, die hard. Chances of boom have gone up 20%. Sure you don't want to tell me your age? We could back out now. But, come on, shoot. I have a real fondness for the tension of a good Russian roulette scene. And this one is really fantastic. Maybe I don't find you intimidating enough. We're down to one in four. It's like you died in two different dimensions already. So again, we could back out. But no, shut up and pull that trigger. <laughs> Spit your age out already. Now it's a one in three chance of dying. Donovan, may I advise you to give up? I didn't plan for you to get into this situation. Listen to your daughter. Again, we can back out or take the one in three. Shoot. Why are you taking things this far? He's not going to quit e either, though. So yeah, like he says, down to a coin toss. Two chambers left. One of them has to have the bullet. Come on, kid. Try to kill me. Prove your heart is steel, but I'm afraid this is the end of the line. If you were expecting me to stop at some point acknowledging your courage, you were wrong. This is the part that I love. You can't back out anymore. Pull that trigger. Do you give up? Donovan, this is the last chamber. 100% chances of death. I don't know if this is your twisted concept of pride, but I'm sorry. Never intended to let you win. <laughs> it was a blank. If it were that easy to leave the Red Strings Club, I would have done so ages ago. This isn't fair, I didn't know I was up against a lunatic. Yeah, eat shit, Irving. Eat shit. <sighs> so I suppose I owe you a job. What's it gonna be? You need someone to be tortured? Well, we could have Diana, Naima, or Larissa tortured. Or you could go through all of that and just be like, Nah. No torture. You can go through all of that? And then simply tell him, I don't need your skills. Which is the best part about all of this. Whew. So, do you like my present? You are completely crazy, Akara. In a good way. Match to surprise me, that's for sure. Ah. And before we can... We can go even further with that. Our buddy Ghost is back! Just shows up to deliver the uh, the new exotic spirits we asked for. Red Secret and Blue Whisper. Think of me more as a wish granter than a smuggler. How do you do it? Wishing is a powerful form of summoning. A strong-willed character such as yours really makes my job easy. You want to try your new ingredients on me? So you don't have to, but this does teach you about the new mm, mechanical wrinkle that this adds. And you see the arrow on the soul disc and the soul nodes? Well now, we have these two spirits that will rotate the orientation of the arrow around, so that also has to sync up.
And aside from this, he doesn't really say anything that's all that revealing about himself or anyone else or the plot. His presence is still really cool, though. And, of course, he adds this extra dimension to the bartending game. So now we're going to get it to rotate counterclockwise and then down and to the left. Mix it all together. We get this kind of sickly looking blue. We may have gone a little far. But there's plenty of room in the glass to remedy that. Just a little over to the right and a little down, probably. Yeah, so a little more vodka. Ah, it should be good enough. Damn. Nope. <laughs> so we're going to need the bourbon. All right, uh, so I don't want to do this later because uh, it's going to clash really hard with the tone of the scene coming up. Uh, not next, but after this next scene. And by the way, um, more trigger warnings for that one uh, for the end of this episode. So I want to make sure I do this monthly Patreon shout out before then uh, for my $10 and up patrons, my glucose guardians, my guiding moonlight. <laughs> uh, so this month, thank you to Victor T, Absinthe Miasma, Evan B, Kyle S., Sindra Lind Ackerblom. Ackerblom, maybe? Hmm. By the way, I looked up the name Sindra to make sure I was saying it right, because I, ha I haven't actually encountered it before. And it's a Nordic name that means mythical dwarf. Ah! Uh, also, thank you to LC to cue it, Wolfman500, Brenton Buchanan, and Cal. Oh, also, while I'm doing that, I don't normally shove calls to action in the middle of the video, but if you want YouTube's algorithm to love and respect me more, you can ring the bell. <laughs> Uh, leave a comment, and like and subscribe. And this is Dr. Edgar Coldstream, Coldstream, who was sent our way via Larissa and Brandi, trying to access his notes on the M&A. He's a great guy, I liked him a lot. Told me you were really interested in my job, so I've come here to meet my fan. I don't give a fuck about confidentiality. There's a third person, uh, Diana, I think, who could also direct Edgar this way. And he recognizes Akara, unlike everybody else who's come through here. Do you mind if we have them join in conversation? Yes, father. I programmed them all to address me as father. Guess I'm compensating for my lost semen dispenser. Oh god, this bastard. Yeah, I forgot Edgar also sucks. <laughs> He's not as obnoxious uh, right off the bat as Irving, but like you can tell he's gonna be a little bit of a shit. Let's talk about Akara though, since she is since they're joining us. In no time, they've adapted to my work style. They've been really helpful and supportive. You should be proud of Akara. Thank you. Makes me happy to hear that. I was afraid all that education supercontinents putting them through the clinic may have ruined their nature. Education is in schooling? No, is in teaching them the corpse philosophy. It's all the idea of the new CEO. Quite ironic if you think about how she was trained. Oh, they also alternate between uh, she, her, and they, them. Okay. I spent ages trapped in the lab giving shape to it, and now I can't wait for people to know its wonders, it being the MNA. So we're finally going to learn a little bit more about that, but first, we're going to offer him a drink. No tequila, please. My body doesn't really deal with it well. So that is literally off the table. We can appear we can appeal to his vanity or fraud. Uh, and there's also I don't know if we're gonna be able to access it since our character technically doesn't have in-game knowledge of it. But there is actually a third uh secret emotional state that you can appeal to in him. 
by mixing up uh, what is called a pink tequila with our two new spirits, uh, the Blue Whisper and the Red Secret, as well as uh, some absinthe. We want to get this to turn a nice pink, but I think you can you can end up getting this without the color being perfect. Instead, this ends up being kind of gray. And again, I don't even know if we can pull this off. So when you mix those three together, they have the same effect as tequila in moving the soul disc to the right. And no, I don't think we're going to get that. So let's go for vanity. So we're going to pour all this out. Oh, uh, remember back when I was theorizing that one of the reasons for stuff like the sculpting minigame and the bartending minigame here was specifically to let you process things in the game and dwell on them a little bit? I read an interview that confirmed that, and I'm really proud that I, I nailed that. I was right about the intention. That's why they're so low-key and contemplative. And it's also so you can sit down and think about what you're about to do. Because whenever you sculpt or... Um, um, mix a drink for someone... Ooh, that's pretty teal. You're explicitly doing something to manipulate them. So the developers want you to reflect on that action that you're taking. I don't know if we'll have enough room in the glass for what we need to do. So I might need to dump this out and try again. Um, it's right near the brim. And we still need, nah. Gotta try this one over. I had to dump it out a second time. Okay, this time it's more centered. So we just needed to go up a little, I think, the arrow is oriented correctly. Third time's a charm. Man, it's a shame that he's such a shit. Because I really dig his whole aesthetic. He is so full of himself. This is why we appeal to his vanity. We should take a picture together. <laughs> for posterity. What shall my privileged intellect help you with? Let's start off with Supercontinent's new direction. They'd be fucking lost without me. Especially with the new CEO's surreal ambitions. Like building a utopia surreal. I guess M&A is the first step. Yep, just the beginning. Supercontinent's aiming to achieve a 10 out of 10 utopia, including new clean and renewable energy plan, eradicate war, save all animal species, redesign the social system so people aren't forced to work. Long term, it even considers colonizing other planets. I see how humanity would be the first and foremost obstacle in that plan. That's why you're aiming to put a smile on each and every one of our whiny faces. Very laudable, but somehow it makes me even more anxious. So since he brought the MNA up, and we still don't know that much about it, let's talk about it. The mirror neuron algorithm is the first program to live and reproduce in human beings. Using implant wearers as transmitters, the MNA can broadcast subconscious conditionals to implant free subjects. This is performed via micro expressions and subtle body language. Given enough exposure, an implant free subject will adopt these patterns, becoming a new host for the program. That sounds ter terrific. Why didn't you tell me if you've known this all along, Akara? Don't blame them. These cuties come with pretty strict confidentiality protocols. Only a few of us at Supercontinent can override them. So what do you think? Okay, how is this possible? What do you plan to broadcast? And doesn't this sound kind of super villainy to you? Just a little? No, it's like savior of mankind stuff. <laughs> Edgar, let's be frank here. You're pushing a mind control device out there.
the only thing that's left to do is for you to laugh maniacally in your lab. I love that. He already did it. Oh, man. There's still time for redemption. You really think I'm evil? I think you're adorable, but the M&A isn't. Whoever is left, I'm going to try to bring you and the M&A down at any cost. I don't deserve that. Release the existence to the public and let them judge. If I did that, my head would be on a spike. He knows people don't want this. It definitely isn't brainwashing. You'll learn soon enough, though. Not a supervillain thing to say. So let's talk about the hows, the particulars here. That's where the magic mirror neurons come into play. These mirror neuron things fire when an animal acts, but also when an animal observes action. And humans' mirror neurons are triple A shit. So basically... Ooh, tell them about the, the primates. Okay, so if you eat a candy bar in front of a monkey, the monkey will start salivating due to these mirror babies. If you do it in front of another human, the effect is the same. But here comes the twist. If you act as if you're eating candy, just mimicking no candy involved in the process, the monkey won't salivate, but the human still will. Monkeys are immune to drama, but our mirror neurons trigger even response in response to simulated actions. Things as hunger, happiness, sadness, rage, etc. They can be transmitted through mirror neurons. So let's talk about mirror neurons a little bit. The experiment they're alluding to came about like 25-ish years ago, and the original purpose of it was to use uh, electrodes to study the, the brain's role in fine motor skills in macaque monkeys. And what they found out by accident was that the same neurons were firing in a monkey when they saw humans eating peanuts that would fire when the monkeys themselves were eating them. That was the discovery of mirror neurons in our genetic cousins. So then further research revealed that humans have these too, and it turns out that they're really sophisticated and probably really important for things like mimicry and social mirroring, which in turn is really important to how we socialize and how we uh, learn to empathize. So in the case of mirroring, we literally learn empathy by doing. We see someone else smile, and we smile. And on some level, we understand what that feels like, and so we know how another person is feeling when they smile. But there's so much that we don't actually know about mirror neurons beyond the broad strokes. I haven't actually heard of anything like what Edgar was actually talking about with um with humans reacting to fake gestures that monkeys don't neurologically react to. So it's either something I just haven't heard about or it's something that they made up for the story. But at the very least, it makes for some cool techno babble that has at least some foundation in science to make it easier to suspend disbelief. Oh, I love that line. Define us. Like, we're talking about who has the keys to the kingdom here, and who can override it, and what steps need to be taken. Because they're essentially talking about putting everything in the hands of Akara, because they're such powerful, betazoid-ass empaths. Uh, and it turns out that they are the ones who are going to be able to administer uh, social psyche welfare through the mirror neuron algorithm. So depending on who has access to all of this, you could do some really dark shit. Oh, by the way, while we were talking about cool neurons, did you know that there is a hypothetical grandmother neuron? Uh, also known as the Halle Berry Neuron. This runs in total contrast to the theory that to make up the mental image of an individual person, like say your grandma or Halle Berry, millions of neurons come together in coordination. Instead, this theory posits that we have an individual neuron for each face that we remember. 
Uh, I will say that this is highly, highly contested, but it has informed a lot of very interesting research, such that even if that theory doesn't end up panning out, uh, it's a step in the right direction to better understanding how we do things like uh, encode memories. And this is a neat little nuance. It'll allow you to be angry, but won't let you fall into wrath. It'll allow you to dwell in pleasure, but won't permit utter hedonism. It'll let you be sad, but not wallow in depression. It kind of shaves away the extremes, according to Edgar. Why do you think you have the right to play God? That's simple, because I can. Shouldn't we all be trying to change society for the better? You pull your strings from this fancy club. I just happen to be a super scientist backed by a powerful corporation. Suck it up. Yeah, man, deal with it. So, skip to the part where you tell me about Akara. So leaving control of the m to corporation or individuals would be unethical, right? We both agree on that. So he's kind of already alluded to this. We have a wonderful, ever-caring AI, which was designed with people's happiness in mind. You've got to agree with me on this. You matter. If, anyone, if there's anyone with enough brain power to assess every person's case individually, it's them. A car can study your habits, hobbies, desires, prejudices, and keep you within your, your optimal emotional range. But like Donovan was saying, if you have the right access, you can override Akara and whatever benevolence Edgar thinks that they're going to, to treat the situation with. And at that point, it is really mind control. Now, we finally find Johanna Septis. Remember, we heard about her earlier um, with the gun to her temple and overlooking the bridge. I need to get closer to keep her from jumping. Approach her, approaching will increase tension, so I should probably talk to her first. Gotta pay attention to her body language. If she's too anxious, putting some distance between us will definitely help. So we just want to get close to her. In this case, emotionally and physically. And we're going to start trying to talk her down from the bridge um, by explaining why she's in this crisis in the first place. And it's because of Ariadne's meddling in her implants which we saw in the beginning of the game proxima infiltrated supercontinents implant clinics and installed some rebel upgrades in you i happen to be very acquainted with the internal workings of these implants you've got an inhibitor it makes the rest of your implants stop working so Many anxiety blockers you had, and whatever other tricks you were using to keep your, con your conscience shut, they aren't doing their job anymore. So this is you finally listening to yourself. Well, I hate myself then. Don't be like that, it's just the shock of dealing with years of repressed feelings. But I can tune your implants again so the anxiety doesn't crush you. If you come with me, I'll happily set you free. Yeah, I'm not a fan of mental manipula manipulation, so I'll do it for free good. She is looking stable. I should move closer. This, uh, I don't really know how to feel about this sequence. It, on one hand, it seems a little bit crass to gamify talking somebody out of suicide in this way, but I think there's a good heart here. And the conversation that they have is still pretty interesting. It's just, it feels really video gamey at a at an emotional point in the story where I think that detracts.
but we're getting a little bit closer to her. And instead of taking another step forward and maybe spooking her, we're gonna... We're gonna talk a little bit more. We can barely see where we're putting our feet anymore. Hell, I've dismissed two chats from my brain drive since we started talking. But then being here, looking at that rock floating on the ocean... We could just start walking the other way and leave the city behind us, huh? Isn't that easy? You bet. It's too much of ourselves cemented to the foundations of those skyscrapers. But think about it. What would you lose? Money? Power? Responsibility? Identity? The weight of the fate of civilization? Yep, <laughs> that too. Oh, she's getting a little bit more comfortable. She's joking. Uh, we're losing her a little. But we still got close. We closed that gap. Why are you doing this? I'm a hero seems like a dickish thing to say. But also, mm, I need you for taking down Supercontinent. Your conscience is killing you because of what the company is trying to pull off. Well, we could use our help. She's close to her limit. Uh, this is an indicator that we need to back up a little bit. It's so gamey. Uh, it's, it's so weird. You must think that I doomed this city, right? Ah, give yourself, you give yourself too much credit. There are countless factors all over the world working relentlessly as we speak to fuck us and this planet. And from my point of view, if you have enough of a conscience to be jumping off this bridge out of guilt, I'm sure the sum of your actions at Supercontinent can't add up to match the damage of the average money-making bastard. He's gonna try to talk her into helping us take down SBW and Supercontinent. There's a weird dance to this. Stay on the railing. There was a metaphor. Stay on the railing. Life's not binary. When you set foot on the ground, you don't need to go back to face some sort of redemption ordeal. Have a hamburger, ride a bike, play a video game. There are plenty of things more important even than our ridiculous war over civil welfare. God, it's been ages since I last logged into Steam. Having fun really puts everything into perspective. I'm being dead serious here. Heard about the girl who died. Woke up uneasy that morning already, but hearing of her demise is what made me flip. Did you know her? Yep, her name was Ariadne. She's a really good friend of mine. That choice at the beginning is why we took Ariadne's knowledge. So we could open up this entire conversation. If it wasn't Supercontinent, it would be someone else that we were fighting. Rather die in a heist than on the couch. Hmm. <laughs> Friend I. I think I'm in love with you. Didn't see that one coming. I think I'm all messed up inside. Looking at the waves, the rippling, the rippling reflection of the city, I see myself as a tiny shadow on the bridge's mirrored image. I don't know who I am anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore, life. But then my chest is burning. I can't deny this feeling. And if I'm gonna die, why should I deprive myself of this last confession of love? I love you, Brandi. I feel like you're the first human I've had an honest talk with since I was a kid. A lame existence. I guess I should just shut up already and jump. Now, come with me. Yeah, we don't love her in a romantic way, but hell, why not? I know a lot of people you can have honest conversations with every day. We're a loving family. <laughs> the revolutionary lot. Why don't you give your life to us instead of the ocean? I feel like we can better we can be better hosts than those rocking neon waves. 
Hell yeah, we stopped her from jumping off the bridge. I think on that note, on that very heavy note, uh, that's gonna do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.